Hello again, I'm Maurice Barrett and I've got a 10 minute vlog for you so let me start the clock and we'll get going. For those who are old enough to remember the Beatles, John Lennon sang the song All We Need Is Love, very catchy song actually. And the church have been saying the same for many years. Uh, there's this love gospel where all we need is love. Just come to Jesus because he loves you, wants to shower his love upon you. Well, this may be true. Maybe that's all we do need, love. But if we don't understand love, then we can easily be fooled. Maybe we've just got sentiment and not love. Seems as though the church these days want unity at any cost without truth. And they want love without pain, without cost. And that's the problem. So I'm going to talk about the cost of love and then I'm going to do another vlog, part two, the sufferings of love. Because I believe that if you love, there'll be a cost, it will hurt. This one's called Love Hurts. Well, let me read you a scripture that you know so well. Every single Christian in the world learns this, maybe one of the first scriptures, after maybe Psalm 23, I don't know. It's John chapter 3, verse 16. And it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believed on him should not perish but have everlasting life. Well, God so loved that he gave. You see, if you love, it's going to cost you. It cost God the life of his only son. I can't believe God was happy when he saw his son dying on the cross for the worst sort of criminals, the worst uh, sort of debauchery that ever happens in the world for mass murderers. God was willing to sacrifice his son because of love. So don't tell me that love has no cost, that we can just love, and it doesn't hurt us. It hurt God. And I believe love without sacrifice, without cost, without hurt, is mere sentimentality. I'll read you that again. Love without sacrifice and cost and pain is mere sentimentality. So let's get down to practicalities. How can we prove love? How can you prove love if you won't sacrifice for the one or the thing that you say you love? You can't. Let me quote some scriptures. John chapter 14, verse 15, Jesus was talking to his disciples and he said, If, if you love me, keep my commandments. Commandments, you might say. I thought we were in the Old New Testament. I thought the commandments were gone. Aren't we under grace? Certainly we're under grace. Certainly the commandments of the ceremonial law are finished. Not the moral law of God, the Ten Commandments, obviously they still stand. But we are under grace. But do we have commandments in the New Testament? Well, of course we do. Let's read the scripture, John chapter 13, verse 34. This is what Jesus says to his disciples. A new commandment I give you. Oh, so... Here's a commandment in the New Testament. A new commandment I give you, that you love one another. Well, not quite. That you love one another as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. So how did Christ love us? He was willing to die for us. When we were without God, when we didn't know him, he was willing to die for us. So we've got to love one another as Christ loved us. In other words, I've got to be willing and love you enough to die for you. So that will hurt. There's a cost there. The church don't know about this. They don't know about sacrifice. They've taken it out of the theology. We've now got a benevolent sugar daddy who just wants to shower us with gifts. And it's not biblical. It's Jesuit inspired, this gospel of love. Here's another scripture, John 14, verse 21 to 24. Jesus says, he that hath my commandments. So there's more than one there. Jesus said, he that hath my commandments and keeps them, he it is that loves me. So that's, that's plain enough, isn't it? If you keep his commandments, you're the ones that love him. And he that loves me shall be loved of my father. And I will love him and will manifest myself to him. Missing a verse out, the next verse says, Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words. That's plain enough. And my Father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. 
He that doesn't love me doesn't keep my sayings. Let me say that again. He that doesn't love God, he that doesn't love Jesus, doesn't keep Jesus' sayings, doesn't keep God's sayings. That's plain enough, isn't it? You know, I've studied the Bible now for well, over 60 years. And I've never found anywhere where God in the Old Testament or Jesus in the New Testament ever gave a suggestion. He never said, I think it's a good idea if you don't kill. I think it's a good idea if you do this. I think it's a good idea if you tithe and keep the Sabbath. And Jesus never gave any suggestions. All God's instructions, all Jesus' instructions are non-negotiable. The commandments with consequences. If you don't keep them, there's consequences. Well, let's look at some examples of Jesus' commandments. I'm looking at Matthew chapter 16, verse 20 to 26. The context is that Jesus has just, uh, well, Jesus didn't, but Peter has just had this wonderful revelation that Jesus wasn't only the Messiah, but he was also the Son of God. And Jesus then charged them. It starts off at verse 20. Then Jesus charged his disciples that they should tell no man that he was Jesus the Christ. And then from that time forth, as soon as they knew that he wasn't just the Messiah, the political leader, he was actually the Son of God, Jesus began to show his disciples how he must go to Jerusalem, suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes, and be killed and be raised again the third day. This was a shock to the disciples. Then Peter took him and began to rebuke him, saying, Be it far from thee, Lord, this shall not be unto thee. Well, I understand that. P Peter wanted the love gospel. Peter wanted everything to be nice. Jesus had come. He was the Messiah. He was going to get rid of the, the Roman scourge. And he was going to reign on earth. And they were arguing who'd sit on the right and the left hand. Peter didn't want any suffering. And so he rebuked Jesus for even talking about it. And Jesus said to Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan. You are an offence unto me, for you savour not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. And then Jesus turned to his disciples. Don't forget, this is not a suggestion. Jesus never suggested anything. He said, If, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself. That's going to cost you. That's not sentimental love, denying yourself. That means you've got to get rid of your ambitions, your plans, your destiny, your self-worth. Deny yourself, take up your cross. That means you're going to be crucified. That old nature of Adam, the, the, the nature you were born with, the selfishness, the pride, the lust, the anger, all your ambitions and pride, got to be crucified and follow me. And then he says this, for whosoever will save his life will lose it. So we've got a choice here. Because he said, whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. So if I'm willing to lose my life and my ambition and my destiny and my self-worth, then I can gain Christ's life. But if I want to hold on to my life and my destiny and God to bless me, I'll lose his life. And then he says an amazing thing, and the church preached it to the non-Christians, but they're wrong. This is to disciples. He turned to his disciples and said... For what is a man profited if he gains the whole world and lose his own soul? What shall a man give in exchange for his soul? You can't put a value on it. So therefore you need to deny yourself, take up your cross, follow me. That's one of his commandments. You lose your life to gain it. You die to live. Jim Elliot, the missionary who was massacred by the Incas of uh, Peru, said this, he's no fool to lose what he can't keep, to gain what he can't lose. Let me read that again. He's no fool to lose what he can't keep, his own life, his own ambitions, to gain what he can't lose, the life of Christ. Well, God will test you, attempt you to see if you love him, because he wants to know. He did it with Eve in the Garden of Eden. He put the tree there, the, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And he'll do the same with us. He'll test us to see if we love him. Eve, as, as it happened, loved herself more than God. She pleased herself. She wouldn't pay the price of love. Well, many people think they love God, but actually they're afraid of hellfire. 
They go to church, they say their prayers, they read the Bible, they do all these things because they don't want to go to the lake of fire. So Christians do things because of fear, not love. There's only one test, and that's to obey the words of Jesus. Jesus took three chapters to share his manifesto for a disciple. Matthew 5, 6 and 7, the Sermon on the Mount. If you're not living it, you can't prove to me that you love God. And I don't believe you can prove it to God either. If you love me, keep my commandments. I've filmed 64 teachings on the Sermon on the Mount. You can go to YouTube, type in Barrett Ministries in YouTube. The whole channels will come up. There's 64 teachings. It's the manifesto to prove that you love God. The time's gone. God bless you. Have a wonderful week. See you next vlog.